What's up guys, today I'm going to be doing the offlane video for builds and what in my opinion is the best builds for offlaners. Uh, I appreciate everybody that's been watching the past two videos. Uh, hopefully the offlaners like this video, let me know if you enjoy it. Uh, Pre-note, I am not going to be doing Countess or Shimbi in this video, even though they can both play solo lane as well as some other characters like Gadget perhaps. Uh, a lot of these characters are covered in the mid lane video, so they will not be in this video. Their builds are pretty much the exact same in solo as they would be in mid, so I am going to not go over them in this video. To start, we're just going to go with Crunch. Uh, typically on Crunch, you kind of have like a few different options on Crest. Uh, usually I go Witch Docker, but you can also go something like War Boots or Ice Scorn Talons. I would recommend either Witch Docker or Ice Scorn personally. If you think that you need to be a little bit more of a frontline because you, let's say, maybe have like a Assassin Jungle, like a Fang Mao or something, it might be better to go something like War Boots or Sapphire Mental as they do make you a little bit more tanky. Uh, if you need to be that kind of frontline character for your team. To start the first item, I usually go like first actual item. It's usually Mutilator. It just has a really good spike, and then it gives you Omnivamp, which stacks with Crunch Passive, as well as the Omnivamp that you might get from Witch Stalker, which gives you really good trades. Also allows you to do some extra damage with your abilities, and then you, know, you get a little bit of uh, health steal and stuff like that, which makes you a little bit more tankier, and allows you to really kind of put a lot of pressure on the lane. Uh, the second item I usually go in most games, uh, you start going into kind of more of like a defensive build for the most part. Uh, once you kind of get to this point, since you are a soul laner, your job is to be more of a frontline oriented character. So you kind of have a couple options here. You can either go Citadel or Tainted Guard. Both are solid options. Citadel is a little bit more of a well-rounded option. It's a lot of defense. You get 45, but anytime you're near somebody, you also get... Uh, defense for just being around people so at minimum it's actually 53 defense in team fights it easily goes up to 85 since you're going to be around five people this also reduces armor of nearby enemies which increases not only your own damage because you deal physical damage but also that damage of your teammates so it's a very good item uh really strong second item you're going to see it a lot in these builds uh either in the early slots or in the late slots it's just always a very solid item Tainted Guard, again, very, really solid item. Uh, it gives you physical defense and applies anti-heal whenever you get auto-attacked, which your job as the soul laner is typically to kill the ADC. So this allows you to trade better into ADCs while reducing their lifesteal. The next item that I would usually go is you kind of have like magical defense uh, options. Typically you get an unbroken will uh, this is probably the best magical defense item in the game. Uh, however, you do have the option to get something such as a Tainted Bastion. Uh, this combines really well with Tainted Guard by giving you extra mitigations. Uh, you don't stack the Blight, so the Blight only goes up to 40%. However, you do get the secondary passive of Bastion if the anti-heal is procced by Tainted Guard. So let's say you get auto-attacked, you still get that 10% mitigation now against that target from Tainted Bastion, which is really, really strong. This also combines really well with uh, one of the situational items, which is Giant's Ring. Uh, one of the newer items, it's a very good option and is really strong on crunch. Typically, if you don't need uh, both of these, you would go something like this. Uh, I think this is really strong. If you don't wanna get Tainted Guard, you can always swap this out and then you can get something like a Stonewall Last. Uh, Stonewall is a very strong item, just reduces the amount of damage you take, uh, gives you extra mitigations against physical abilities, and then uh, also, applies the stun around people uh, whenever you get low HP, which can be really strong in crunch, especially with the amount of CC that he already has. So typically your build is either looking something like this, or you might go uh, something a little different where maybe you could go like a Citadel later in the game. A very strong item, especially for your team. Uh, it depends on if you want to do a little bit more damage. I would, respect, I would recommend typically uh, something probably like this. So this would probably be my ideal build if you don't need the anti-heal items. Uh, again, if you need anti-heal, you can get either of these. They're very good. Uh, this is typically my build, though, for the most part. One thing that I do not have listed here that is another option to start uh, on Crunch instead of the Mutilator. Some people like starting this augmentation. Personally, I don't think it's as good as Mutilator in the offlane, whereas in jungle it gets a lot more value. I do think it is still a good option and is worth trying if you want to 
go that route, especially if you're going to go something like Ice Scorn anyways. You're not going to really stack the damage off the, or not the damage, the uh, Omni Vamp off Mutilator, so you can get a little bit more value off the augmentation. Uh, usually your build will look something like either this, or you swap it to something like this. I think both are very strong, and I think both are very good and worth trying. But that's it for Crunch. There's not really too much more to go into. There's a lot of other items that are in the game that have the potential to be really good. Some people might say something like Draconum or something like that, uh, which aren't bad items. Uh, one item I should note uh, is Frost Guard. Frost Guard is also really good, specifically against auto attack comps. Uh, if you're against like a ADC off lane, you can throw this item in last item. Uh, I almost forgot to mention it. Or if you're against like a double ADC, some people play like Twin Blast mid or something like that, or a Chimera. Let's say they have a Grux Chimera and an ADC. You can get a lot of value off this item as well by slowing attack speed of nearby enemies, which can be really strong. So that's also something to note uh, in your back pocket and just kind of keep it there in case you need it. It's a really good uh, last item. Next up, we are going to go to Fang Mao. Uh, Fang Mao is pretty simple soul laner. Uh, you kind of play him the same way that you would play him in jungle. The only difference is how you would start the game uh, in your build. He's a full damage soul laner, so when you play him, you kind of have to go full damage. I would not ever recommend going uh, full defense or even like a hybrid build. You just don't do anything that way. Your whole job is to kind of be an assassin. Uh, even though you're playing soul lane, you are still expected to assassinate people, so you kind of have to uh, build that way. To start, normally you go uh, Assassin's Crest into Nex. Uh, if you really need to, you can get a Witch Docker, but you really need the Nex in most games to kind of get your full damage combo off and to take the most value out of the most potential uh, value out of your kit. So I would recommend always going Nex. But if you really do need the Witch Docker, let's say you're against like a Fey or Richter and stuff like that, that's really just shutting you down, and you think that's going to be a problem, you can always go into the Witch Docker if you need to. First item, usually when you start. Uh, as him in offlane, you generally go Soul Chalice, which is the tier two component to Mind Razor. The reason you don't finish it immediately is because it takes a while to stack. So rather than finishing it immediately and not really getting as much value, you go Soul Chalice. This is a little different than in jungle. In jungle, normally you would finish Mind Razor because it increases your clear. However, you don't really need the full Mind Razor to clear in solo lane. So usually you don't finish it first. Usually you go the Chalice, stack it up a little bit while you build your second item, and then you come back and finish it after you finish uh, the Mutilator, which is the next item that we build. So usually you go Soul Chalice in the Mutilator. By the time you finish Mutilator, you should be like getting to the point where you're stacking your Chalice, and then you come back and you finish the Mind Razor, uh, something like that. So this should be your first two items. Mutilator, again, a great item. Omni Vamp works really well on Fang Mao. He takes it full advantage of it. Uh, the passive is really nice for him, makes him a little bit tankier, and just allows him to actually trade effectively. The Omni Vamp kind of just wins you the lane. By the time you get the Mutilator online, you will start just winning trades uh, really hard, especially since by the time you get Mutilator, you will be about the same time that you get your next online, uh, which just makes it really, really strong. The third item you go is Pain Weaver. Uh, shouldn't need too much explanation. Uh, it is just a really strong item. It gives you movement speed, pen, uh, cooldown, pretty much everything Fang Mao needs. Uh, you pretty much always building a side on Fang Mao. It's made for Fang Mao. It's his best item probably. And then you just get a lot of value out of it. It's, it allows you to rotate faster, allows you to actually kill tanks, things like that. It's just a really strong item. You can almost never be chased when you have this item as well. Uh, it's just really, really strong. Fourth, you go Perforator. You need this so you can hit tanks and just get through some of the chunky base props that some of these characters have, uh, especially like, you know, the support maybe. Uh, sometimes you'll have like a Decker support building like a Dynamo or something, uh, and this really allows you to just kind of one-shot them and not have to worry too much about it, as well as hit the tanks if you need to. And then you still do, you still get value from it by going through the base protections that other characters have. Gives you cooldown. The slow on the abilities is kind of less relevant, but you don't really get value out of Demolisher, unfortunately. So this is kind of the best option that you have. It does give you 25 haste, which is really strong on Feng Mao as well. He is a cooldown based character. So having your cooldowns up more often is always a good thing. Last item, you kind of have like a, like a few options, really. Uh, you can go something like Omen. Typically, if you want to get a little bit more burst off, you like dash in, E, auto attack cancel into the Q. Your dash should be back up pretty much instantly because of the cooldown reduction that you get on the dash after you land your E on somebody, and then you also are proccing the Omen passive, which can be really strong. Uh, another option that you could go is Tectonic Mallet. 
gives you an insane amount of power, and then it also gives you a lot of movement speed, which can be really nice. It can help you deal with things that are slowing you, perhaps, potentially uh, like a gadget or something like that. It gives you a nice little bit of magical defense, so you're better against uh, mages, which is kind of your goal to kill as, a, as an assassin. You kind of want to kill the mage first if you can, just because it's the easiest person for you to pick off in most comps, maybe not if it's like a Gideon. Uh, but those are two fantastic options. Uh, a third option, if you don't want to go either of these two, you could go Dread potentially. I do think Dread is just worse than Tectonic Mallet, and that's if you need uh, some magic defense. I think Mallet also gives you magic defense and just gives you more stats overall and more damage. Uh, but if you are getting like a one-shot bursted by like a Countess, uh, Dread could be a little bit better in that type of situation. So it is something to think about. Uh, that's pretty much it for Fang Mao. There's a couple other items that could be like pretty strong on them. Uh, for example, Infernum could be a really good item sometimes. I don't think you should build it really just because your slots are kind of locked in up here. Uh, you could swap like Mutilator late game for it, but I think the, the life seal you get from Mutilator is just too strong. But it is a solid option and something that you can always think about in the future. Mesmer, another great option that you could potentially go in certain games. And then just like the ADC video, due to the fact that you're an assassin, you could always get a Stonewall last item. That's specifically for games where you're against something uh, like a Kalari that is just going to try to one-shot you, or maybe like a full damage is Aris, uh, and you kind of need that protection and that stun to really get a good trade-off. Uh, but typically, your, your last item should be Tectonic Mallet in the majority of your games. Next up, we have Greystone. Greystone is pretty much just a true tank. You kind of go full defense. Uh, you do get like a couple hybrid-y items, uh, but for the most part, you always go uh, Sapphire Mantle. He's probably the only character that I would still get Sapphire Mantle on just because it got nerfed a little bit, but he still gets a lot of value. You can pop this right before you ult. His ult heals him based on his percent missing HP from his max. Uh, this gives you more max HP, so it allows you to get a larger heal. Uh, War Boots is also a really good item that you could potentially get on him. Uh, but you can kind of go back and forth, decide whichever one you want. If you think the fight's going to be a little bit more extended and you want to just get healing in general, uh, War Boots is the way to go. If you want to just maximize the value from the ultimate specifically, I would recommend going into something like Sapphire Mental. Uh, as for his first item, in my opinion, the best option in solo lane is Fire Blossom. It just makes you untradeable in the lane. As soon as you finish your tier 2, you can just come back and start swinging on people with your Q. Uh, it also allows you to just do jungle camps and things like that. If you have full fire blossom, it does double damage to camps. Some people are going to be like, well, you don't get the value from the from the double damage when you get when you stun somebody. And that is true, but it still does double damage to camps. And that still allows you to clear camps very fast and really get good invades off, especially since you're very safe. It's very hard to get punished when you do something like that. And it makes you pretty much untradeable into almost every character in the game. The next item I would go would be Basilisk. This is a fantastic item on Greystone. You have a lot of dot damage between your Q and Fire Blossom, which allows you to stack the Corrode really, really fast, and then allows you to start chunking with your auto attacks. You also have a built-in auto attack cancel on your E, which allows you to really dominate uh, any, any enemy laners in the matchup. The other benefit to Basilisk is it gives Greystone his best stat, which is cooldown. He really struggles uh, building some of these tank items and getting effective cooldown. Uh, so this item really kind of allows him to do that. The Corrode Shred also reduces the armor on the person as a debuff, which means that it also increases the damage that your team is going to be doing uh, because they're going to have less physical defense on the enemy team. The third item I would go, typically you go a magical defense item. These are all kind of interchangeable, like your third, fourth, and fifth slots are all usually pretty un uh, interchangeable depending on the game. Sometimes you might want a second physical defense item in that slot if you're against a heavy fizz team. Sometimes you might need an unbroken will and get like a magical defense in this slot. It just kind of depends. Uh, I would recommend using your best judgment on which one you think you need at that stage of the game. Typically, you get an Unbroken Will. Sometimes you could get a Crystalline Curious if you don't think they have a lot of CC. Let's say they have like a Muriel or something, and they you know might not have like a super heavy CC offlaner. Uh, you know maybe they're playing like a Mage offlane or something like that, or have like a gadget mid lane. Uh, they don't have a ton of CC, so you might not get as much value from Unbroken. So in those type of games, you could maybe go uh, Crystalline. Uh, also really good against Iggy and Morrigesh. This, this item hard counters both of them because they're constantly hitting you, which means that you're going to get the value uh, and the movement speed from this very early, and you're going to get a lot of protections from this item. Very strong item uh, into those matchups specifically. 
typically those are your two like primary options. Sometimes you'll go Tainted Bastion. I uh, usually you only combo this with uh, Tainted Guard. Typically, if you need a Tainted Guard, you can go Tainted Guard into Bastion. Uh, usually, you don't uh, have Bastion by itself most of the time. So just something to think about uh, when you're playing, whether or not you go something like this or whether or not you go physical defense uh, in that slot, something like a Citadel, a fantastic item on Greystone. Usually my go-to build, this is kind of what my four slot items are looking like. It's usually unbroken into Citadel. Sometimes I'll go Citadel third, it depends. It gives you again more protection shred and then a lot of base stats that are just really strong for you. Protections, health, a little bit of damage. Uh, and the shred actually stacks with the Basilisk shred. So you get 24% shred from Basilisk. Uh, and then you also get another 20% from Citadel. So you reduce the enemy armor by 44%, which really helps out your ADCs and your physical damage on your team. Uh, and you are a physical damage character, so it really helps you out uh, as well. And then lastly, uh, you kind of have like a few flex options here. You can go a Stonewall if you need more physical defense. You can always get a Crystalline again if you need more magical defense. Uh, Ella Frost is a great option if you want a little bit more of an offensive option that allows you to just kind of chase people down, especially with your auto attack cancel. And then you also have Frost Guard. Frost Guard is again, another great item. Your kind of whole job as Greystone is to just run at the enemy ADC. And then whenever you get low, you ult and you just buy as much time for your team to kill the front line as possible. Uh, Frost Guard gives you a lot of time to do that. You kind of slow their attack speed. And if the ADC isn't doing damage to you, nobody's doing damage to you as Greystone because it's almost impossible for enemy mid laners to kill you as Greystone, except for maybe the Fae, probably the only character that can actually kill a Greystone just because her E does so much damage so consistently. Uh, but in that, if that's the case, then you just get a Crystalline Curious uh, in your last slot. So that's pretty much Greystone. I would pretty much build something like this in most games, or again, you throw a stone wall in there, last item. Uh, but that's pretty simple. I mean, you're just a you're a walk at somebody tank. That's kind of what you want to do. You just want to walk at people, proc your Basilisk auto attacks, jump around, abuse your ability to just be unkillable. Uh, very, very strong character. I have seen other people do... Uh, builds that are a little bit more damage oriented where they might go something uh, health based where they go overlord and bone saw I don't particularly think this build is good it's significantly worse early game in late game you struggle from not having enough protections to withstand something like an ADC you do get a decent amount of damage from it and it can be okay I just don't particularly think that these two items are fantastic on Greystone compared to the other items that you could potentially be getting uh, the other like downside to this build is that you don't get cooldown early game, uh, which is one of the benefits to having Basilisk in your second slot in the top build. Uh, so I would not really recommend these two items. Although if you want to try them, you could definitely try them and see if it works for you. I have seen it work and I have seen people get success with it. I just don't particularly think it's good. I've also seen people go Overlord straight in the Basilisk instead of Fire Blossom like this. I also don't think this is good, again, for the reason that you just aren't going to have enough protections to really be able to deal with people in the late game. Uh, I'm going to go to the next character. Next up we have Grux. Grux is just a hard W key boy. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of things from people saying that they're having a lot of trouble playing against the Grux. Uh, and they don't really know what to do against Grux. Uh, and there's not really a lot of advice I can give you to play against the Grux other than just be careful trading with him in the early game. That can be uh, really detrimental to... Your success in the lane and the what you can do against the grux as long as you don't die pre-6 and then you don't trade him into his ultimate whenever he ults he power steals so as long as you're not uh into the grux when he is power stealing you should be okay for the most part typically when you play grux you want to uh go ice scorn ice scorn is just a really strong item uh it gives you some movement speed it increases your team's damage as well as your own damage uh physically it's a super low cooldown, you can use it all the time, allows you to catch people, allows you to burn objectives, just a really strong item. Alternatively, uh, if you need to be a little bit more of a tankier character, similar to like Crunch, you're a bit of a bruiser character, but if you have a weak front line, for example, maybe like a phase support, and then you have like an assassin jungle, it might be more beneficial to go into something like War Boots, or if you just want to be a little bit more tankier in general, and you don't feel that you need the damage from Ice Scorn. As for your first item, you're just going to go straight in the Basilisk. Uh, this is just a really strong item. Uh, you just win trades as Grux. You just kind of run people down. 
you have the fastest movement speed in the game. You just want to fight. That's what you want to do is Grux and Basilisk let you get that online early. He benefits a lot from the base stats. He gets a lot from the cooldown. The protection shred is really easy to proc because your passive stacks it. So if you hit one auto attack, you basically get the full passive on somebody uh, through the proc, which also reduces protections for your team, uh, similar to Greystone. It is important to note when you buy these items, uh, when you go, depending on the crest that you are going, if you go Ice Corn, for example, you want to make sure that you're buying the sword side of Basilisk first, because Ice Corn stacks off of your magical, or sorry, off of your physical power. Uh, whereas if you are going into the Titan Crest to get War Boots, make sure you buy the the health sides first, because the uh, War Boots Crest stacks off of your max HP. So that's something to just note when you build either of these crests, uh, that the Ice Corn Talons build faster off of damage. Same thing with the Assassin Crest to go like Witch Knocker, which is why things like Mutilator are really strong on uh, Crunch. So just something that uh, you should be aware of. As for second item, typically on Grux, you go Bone Saw. This item actually had its recipe changed a little bit, so it's a little bit better in the early game when you're building into it, uh, as opposed to kind of having two weak spikes. Now you kind of just have like a consistent uh, curve on your build. Uh, this is just allows you to run people down. It gives you a lot of HP, uh, some power, and then a slow on your auto attacks, which your right click actually procs the effect twice. So you need three stacks to get the slow, but the right click counts as two auto attacks. So you effectively only need one auto attack and then a right click to proc it. And then it also gives you attack speed every time you stack it, uh, which can be really strong and allow you to just kind of wail on people, especially with your ultimate. You can get really good trades and really good attack speed uh, off of your ultimate in that item and allows you to just really just blow people up sometimes and catch people off guard. Then we start going into some actual defense. You are still a solo laner and you are still a tank. So you do need to be a little bit uh, frontline-y. Similar to uh, some of these other characters, you are going to be building the same kind of four physical defense items. These are kind of the best ones in the game. Typically you have some combination of Citadel in your build because you need some pen. And then you could either have anti-heal or you kind of have like a stone wall and or frost guard. Typically it's something like a stone wall and you go a citadel uh, unless you need the anti-heal. Uh, frost guard is more situational, it depends on what you're playing against uh, specifically. And depending on the game, you might go a tainted guard for anti-heal. As for magical defense, uh, you kind of have the unbroken will is the best in slot option if you can afford to go it. If you need anti-heal, you can go Bastion. You can always uh, tech into a Citadel last and then go something like this where you go Bastion in the fourth slot. This allows you to get double anti-heal, then you get the mitigations, and you still need the Citadel to be relevant in the late game as a pseudo damage dealer. Uh, you don't really go Crystalline on Grunks just because it's not as much value as it is on other characters. However, you can get a little bit of value off of Voidhelm Voidhelm heals you whenever you CC people, which basically means whenever you use any of Grux's abilities, you will get a little bit of health regen, which can be really strong. So if you need like a second uh, magical defense option, or you don't think Unbroken is going to get a lot of value because you are against a low CC comp, like maybe a Moragesh and a Muriel, then you could get a Voidhelm instead, and then you still tech into that double physical defense because your job is to kind of be on the ADC slash backline, and usually you won't get bursted by... Uh, mages, Even, as long as you have one magical defense item, you should be pretty good against most comps. Uh, sometimes you might need double magical defense, in which case you would just get a second magic defense instead of the stone wall. Moving along, we have Zaurus. Zaurus is he's an interesting character. You kind of have a like a, you have a lot of different options on Zaurus uh, to what you can go. Uh, you have a lot of different crest options and a lot of different uh, build options. He's probably the most flexible character in the game right now. For solo lane, uh, I'm gonna give you what I would build in most games in solo. Typically, I go Witch Docker. Some people like Ice Scorn. I'm much more of a Witch Docker uh, or Ortis person myself. Uh, Ortis is like, if you think you're gonna be able to stack it and you can scale with your ultimate, it can be really strong because you get double scaling on kills, basically. You activate this, you ult somebody, you get power from your ultimate, and then you also get power from this which can really allow you to be like full tank and then still have a very reasonable amount of power. Uh, other than that, you go like Witch Stalker or Ice Corn. 
bulk could be really strong. If again, you need to be a little bit more of a full tank, then you can go war boots uh, in the type of games where you need war boots. Another benefit to war boots is that it allows you to catch people so that you can actually land your ultimate on them if they're like just slightly out of range. You can pop your war boots, get some movement speed, and then you can start running it down the lane. As for first item, very similar to Crunch, you're just going to go straight into a Mutilator. It just gives you the best stats that you need, gives you the lifesteal, it's a great build tree, it gives them cooldown so you get your ult more often, and then it gives you a little bit of tankiness with the health steal, and then you still do a decent amount of burst to tanks because of the shred passive on it. Really, really strong item on uh, Zarus, and in my opinion, one of the best items in the game. Then you go straight along into Citadel. You are a bruiser character similar to grux but you don't really auto attack like that so i like to go citadel it helps your abilities and then it gives you the shred that you would get from something like basilisk which allows you to do a lot more damage to people and you can still have the option to go full damage if you need to because you are such a high scaling character with your passive then you go straight into some magical defense again unbroken will is probably your first choice uh, your second choice would be to somehow get double anti-heal, which would be Tainted Guard into Bastion. If you need anti-heal, let's say you're against a Chimera, you could always go uh, guard third, and then you go Bastion fourth. Uh, this is a pretty solid build. You can also go guard anyways if you're only looking to anti-heal like a Chimera in an ADC. Uh, and then you can just go unbroken still regardless. You don't necessarily need Bastion, uh, but it is an option if you want it. Last items, again, uh, Stonewall and Frostguard, really good last items. As Zaurus, because you're a little bit more of a pseudo damage dealer, you can actually go a second damage item if you want to. If you're in a position to get a little bit more of a damage item and you have like the front line to do so, you, maybe you have a Richter support, a Rampage jungle, something like that that's full damage, or uh, sorry, full tank, you can actually get a Tainted Blade in here in one of these last slots, which can be really strong. Uh, it'll catch a lot of people off guard. It increases the damage you deal uh, after you apply blight to somebody. You apply blight whenever you deal damage to them with physical damage, which is all Zaurus does is physical damage, and this allows you to be uh, a lot more aggressive and do a lot more damage, especially if you start scaling with something like Ortis in your ultimate. You could be an absolute threat and be incredibly tanky with something like this. Uh, it also gives you cooldown, which is really nice to get more ults off and more ability combos off. So typically, uh, this is what my build would look like if I am trying to hard carry the game. Uh, if I need to be a little bit more of a tank, again, I could go something like Bastion or maybe get uh, a Tainted Guard in here uh, to get three defense items. Usually, again, you only need one magical defense in most games, unless you are against a heavy magical comp, in which case you would get something like this. Uh, there is one matchup where you might get a magical defense item uh, well, a couple of matchups, actually. If you are against a Steel specifically or a Severog, go into Magical Defense before you get your Citadel in the third slot. Go your Unbroken Will or go uh, Tainted Bastion, uh, depending on the matchup and whatever you need uh, in that game. Pretty much always go a Magical Defense item if you are against Steel or Severog. Richter also is appear in solo, like he can appear in solo lane. He's not played as much recently, but if he is, you also go a broken will against these characters, and you will just start winning the laning phase. They cannot really kill you when you have this item uh, against any of them. They all apply a lot of CC, but you heal every time you get CC'd, so it kind of stops them from being able to uh, really trade effectively with you. So, in those matchups specifically, do not go Citadel uh, in the second slot. Go Citadel in the third slot. Next up, we have uh, Richter. Richter is the next offlaner. Richter is uh, a full tank. He's kind of similar to Greystone, although more of a magical-based version. Typically on Richter, you almost always go War Boots. You don't really get any other value from any of the other options. You can sometimes go Saphir if you think that the game is going to go late, but usually you just go War Boots uh, as it is the more effective option at the moment. Then you're going to go straight into Fire Blossom. It basically makes every trade winnable, uh, even into magical matchups like Steel or something like that. You kind of just win with your E, and then the damage from Fire Blossom is just unbeatable. You just demolish everybody uh, with this option. Secondly, you go into Tainted Guard. You almost always go Tainted Guard because you need some type of cooldown on this character. You could sometimes go Giant's Ring too. It's kind of a newer item. I haven't been able to test it nearly as much, 
but it does give you cooldown and it gives you the HP and protections that you need. So you can sometimes go uh, Giant's Ring in this slot maybe if you don't need the anti-heal. Usually, as a Richter, you kind of have a hard time getting to the ADC, so getting a little bit of anti-heal and the extra damage from Tainted Guard can be really nice, as opposed to something like the cooldowns from Giant's Ring. Uh, so usually your build will look something like this, and then you go into some magic defense, uh, which should be a Unbroken Will if you have the option. If you don't have the option, then you could always go something like a Flux Matrix. Because you're a magical damage character, uh, you do get a lot more value from Flux Matrix, especially if you have a uh, magical jungler like a Shimbi or a Countess or something like that. You can get a lot of extra value from this uh, by increasing their damage as well. It's not as much defense as something like Unbroken Will, but it is really strong. It does give you cooldown, so it could be really useful on Richter. And sometimes I'll even go uh, in the fourth slot after Unbroken if you feel like you need it, because these first two are heavy loaded with some physical defense. And then last item, you again, uh, same thing as these other characters, you go kind of a frost card or you go a stone wall in these last two slots, uh, the last slot. These are kind of your your three options last. You can go any one of these in the last slot. Typically stone wall is your, your go-to. Uh, especially if you're against things like Crunch or Fang Mao or Kalari or something like that, or even like a Grux. Stonewall is typically uh, your last slot. That is usually what my build would look like. Sometimes if you're against, again, like a Grux Chimera and an ADC or double ADC composition, you might want to go like a Frost Guard, and Giant's Ring is a, nice, is a nice good option if you want to go that route. Again, I haven't tested it enough, so I don't actually know how good it is. And then... Similar to the other characters, you can always go a Tainted Guard in your build instead of a Flux Matrix if you want to. Very, very solid character. Very, very good character. I would not really recommend building any damage items. Some people might be like, well, why not? Uh, something like World Breaker, he gets a lot of HP, he might get some value from it. It's not effective enough for it to be worth building over some of these other items. You just get more damage off of Flux Matrix than you would off World Breaker, and more value on, than you would off of something like that. So I think that is worth mentioning. Next up we have Severog. Severog really doesn't change at all. Uh, he's pretty much the exact same as uh, Richter, if not the same. He is, you're just a monster in the lane. Uh, you built Tainted Guard, uh, you know, Fire Blossom, the same magical defense items. Uh, you build basically the exact same. Uh, Steel's pretty similar. Again, you're going to do the same thing on Steel for the most part. The only difference is I would say Giant's Ring gets less value on a character like Severog just because he's a little bit more mobile. And the alternative option is to get an Ella Frost uh, instead. So you could go something like this if you want a little bit more actual damage. And then you end up getting a, you know, Unbroken Flux Matrix. Uh, potentially in the third, fourth slot. And then last item, uh, or fourth item, you end up getting the Stone Wall or the Frost Guard in these last two slots. Uh, pretty much the same thing. The only difference is the Ella Frost versus the Giant Ring. I think Ella Frost is a better item on Severog. It's easier to proc, and you get a lot more value out of it than you might uh, from Giant's Ring on Severog. Uh, and you are magical based, so things like Citadel don't really give you a lot of value, and you aren't a damage dealer. And again, you might say, well, maybe you get a lot of value from something like Worldbreaker. And typically, you just don't get as much value, even though Severog Passive gives him a lot more bonus HP, you still don't get as much value as you would from being full tank. A lot of your damage is base damage, so this doesn't really give you as much uh, value as you might think from the percent health passive. So typically, my build will look something uh, like this, or you get the physical... Uh, Frost Guard in the last slot. Sorry, it's right there. You somehow look something like this most of the time. In most games, this is how you should look on Severog. Uh, you can go Mantle sometimes if you want to. Again, if you think the game is going to go super late, I don't think it's as good as War Boots, but if the game is like 45 minutes, you can definitely get a lot of value out of it. And it's not a bad option, uh, although War Boots is a little bit better. And then Steel, uh, again, the same thing. Uh, the only difference is you don't proc Ella Frost uh, like Severog, but pretty much the exact same thing as Richter. Uh, you go Fire Blossom into, you know, Tainted Guard, or you go Fire Blossom into, like, a Flux Matrix if you're against a Severog or, like, a Richter or something or Unbroken Will in the third slot. These are all kind of interchangeable. And then you have the Flexes into Bastion if you need more anti-heal. Uh, you have Flexes into uh, 
the frost guard in the third slot or the unbroken in the third slot pretty much all of these items are flexible in the third slot uh, but not much changes for him he pretty much plays the exact same way as uh, Severog or Richter uh, in terms of build so there's not really much more I can say the one thing that is a little different is that he gets value from uh, Void Helm so if you do want to go Void Helm all of your abilities uh, outside of the shield immobilize or displace people which allows you to get benefits from the 3% healing passive so sometimes if you need a second defense item and you want more hard defense than something like Flux Matrix, you can throw a Void Helm in here in the 4th or 5th slot, and it's completely acceptable, uh, in my opinion. Giant's Ring is okay on him. Uh, still not fantastic, but it is okay. It does give you more cooldown on your right click, which allows you to just start bashing people, especially if you're on the ADC. Uh, but typically when you play Steel, you kind of go front to back, similar to Richter. You throw the wall down, zone off the ADC with the wall, and then you start CCing the front line for the rest of your team. So Giant's Ring might not get as much value as something like a Flux Matrix to just increase your team's damage or just a Frost Guard to further build physical defense and slow people. Uh, most of your damage comes from Fire Blossom and Tainted Guard on these characters or just spamming abilities because you have uh, so much tankiness that you can just get you know 18 abilities off in a team fight. Uh, but hopefully that's pretty uh, explanatory. Uh, I have had some questions about what website this is. This is omita.city. Uh, if you guys are interested in looking at this website or you know making your own builds on here and whatnot and seeing uh, what stats certain things have uh, this is a little bit longer of a video than i kind of wanted it to be uh, but if you learned something or you found it helpful let me know in the comments uh, tomorrow i will probably be doing the jungle uh, guide for builds if not the support guide uh, i'll have both of those out in the next couple days three days uh, and then a tier list of characters and the current meta uh, following that so let me know if you enjoyed the video, if you didn't, uh, in the comments, and I will see everybody later. Thank you for watching.